Hi, welcome back to Sound Waves. And in this episode, Grammy winning singer, songwriter, composer, and violinist Lily Hayden will be joining us. Uh, she's releasing a new song on her latest album, Sayonara, which uh, is very apropos for the uh, current affairs. Lily, how are you doing? Great. Thank you so much for having me. How are you? Welcome on the show. I'm doing great. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really grateful that you're here on the show and um, you've been really busy lately. And uh, so how are things going right now? And we'll go into all the stuff that you're doing. It's an interesting, my, when people used to ask my mom, uh, comedian Lotus Weinstock, how she was, she would say, I'm every way. And so I, I am carrying that mantle. I, I so I'm every way. I'm, uh, you know, delighted to be releasing new music and also feeling the kind of cosmic stress that is in, you know, a, as we enter the uh, the new year, the new administration, the post-COVID hopefully time, the Aquarian age, the, you know, the end of hopefully the, uh, we hopefully we've dodged a bullet on uh, literally uh, in terms of fascism, uh, but we'll see. I think this weekend there's a lot of, uh, you know, I think there's some violence planned this weekend. So hoping that this music adds to the collective love consciousness and, mm. uh, and hopefully is a more powerful force than the, than the destructive forces. Are you worried about the next couple of days coming up? Yeah, I'm, I think, you know, we saw what happened last week. Uh, people are, people are revved up and passionate. And I love passion, but this feels a little <laughs> bit, <laughs> I, you know, it's a, uh, I, so I appreciate passion, and yet this feels like it's been fueled by some misinformation and uh, and um, and I don't know what else to say. I, I think it's really okay. I do know what to say. Here's the thing. Obviously, I think that people have been provoked by a, a megalomaniacal. Uh, sociopath. Uh, but on the other hand, and I actually just saw this online. This is funny. Uh, so it's hard to, you know, people on different sides of the political spectrum, you know, it's hard to know, you know, I, mean, I feel strongly about my convictions. They feel strongly about their convictions. Uh, you know, who's right? Uh, you know, we are, is there a moral equivalence? Uh, but a really good sort of um, point of reference is are there Nazis on my side? If there are Nazis, I'm on the wrong side. I think it's pretty much safe to say that Nazis can be our guiding light. And, you know, if somebody is wearing a Camp Auschwitz t-shirt or <laughs> 6 million wasn't enough t-shirt, then I'm on the wrong side. I think that's a good point of reference to say, uh, you know, our, like what's happening. So I am a little bit scared about what's happening. Uh, and I think that uh, I think, but it, but I but having said that, I also realize that uh, I, I think it's really important to understand that the brain has different sections of the brain. The amygdala, the, the lizard brain, is stoked by fear, and once when, when, when it's when the amygdala is activated, it actually hijacks the energy from the rest of the brain, the empathetic part of the brain, the nuanced part of the brain, the kind of subtler. Uh, subtler thoughts. So while people are stoked up on fear and rage, coming at them with uh, with an equal and uh, you know an equal kind of force is only going and more fear is only going to compound the source of the behavior that we find challenging. The only thing that will actually heal this kind of behavior is love and understanding. Hmm. 
and that's why the album is called More Love. <laughs> I was going to say, great transition. <laughs> it's not a transition. This is my spirit, my musical path, and my spiritual path, and my uh, and my political convictions are all inextricably linked. Truly, I I think that as artists, we have you know our our job is to 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 activate the parts of the brain that cause empathy and kindness and nuanced thinking and can get somebody to uh to say you know with a with a rifle to say hey you know what what are, what are we actually doing here you know i i don't yeah. I, I feel like I, I i'm a petite woman i'm five feet tall i'm just over five feet tall you know somebody comes at me I, uh, even if i had a rifle i don't feel like my def I think I'm more able to defend myself with a song than I am a rifle, to be honest. Absolutely. I mean, you know, looking at your past, you were a poli sci major at Brown, right? Yeah. So you could have went that way, but the way you have gone where you are now is, is so much more powerful with the pen, you know, and the violin. You're using music as a way to amplify how you feel in your self-expression, you know, like you said, it's, it is all one, it's every way, or as your mother used to say. Yeah. And you know, <laughs> the other thing is that when you put out a song, you know, that's supposed to be about peace, then it also forces you to be accountable. You know, you can't very well be an asshole to the person that is you know, in front of you when you're singing about peace and love, or you can, but then you become a, a joke. Yeah. Well, you know, this since is, uh, this is a song that says enough is enough, you know, war is I don't care what you say you're fighting for. War is not the answer. And it sounds cliche or corny, but but I'll just tell you the lyric. Uh, it's I mean, and who of us hasn't screamed enough is enough already. Right. I'm sure, you know, I mean, I, I certainly over the last four years and well before that. Uh, I have said, so the, so the lyric is enough is enough is enough of the suffering. No more war. I don't care what you say you're fighting for. And I say sayonara to the drama. I don't want to play that game. Sayonara to the dogma. Nobody was born to hate. All I want to do is love you. I'm laying down my arms today. Not another, not another, not another in my name. Hmm. That's deep. So that's where the peace sign comes from, you know, and it's uh, uh, what I realize is that the that when we fight over a good cause, all we're doing is perpetuating the domination paradigm that that perpetuates the oppression and separateness that hmm. we say that we're fighting against. Yeah. I, I was referring to the time when I, you know, we ran into each other on the street in Sunset Boulevard. I don't know how many years ago, but we did this little. We looked at the sun and did that head prayer. Do you do it at the same time every day, or is it is it lockstep for you, or no? Uh, no, I take nothing is the same every day. Every day is different for me. Um, I have no. Uh, I I can never, I can never plan anything because everything is fluid. Um, it sounds so flaky, but it's true. You know, you just. Uh, but. Uh, no, it just, I just, I try to carve out at least 10 extra minutes at the beginning, at the top of the day where I mm. get to sort of have the touchstone of, of, you know, my purpose, which is to bring, to see through the eyes of love, to see through the eyes of compassion, to mm. be an expression of the, the big love and to share and to, to to make magic with music or healing or whatever it is to to be enchanted and to to stay there because uh the trip to hell is just right around the corner you can go there anytime you want <laughs> so i think it's it's important to kind of anchor yourself uh at the top of the day because otherwise for me i get uh, it's easy to get untethered Agreed. Yeah, I, you know, it's funny, I, in, in my day to day with COVID, another thing that COVID has offered is, is I'm starting, I would start to feel guilty that I don't have some structure. But in the beginning of the day, I like my Palo Santo and I do 
prayer work before I even get out of bed. Like I'm Good. before I even start moving, like I ease in and with gratitude and acceptance is like my, but enough about me. This is about you. So let me ask you, what was the impetus to start Sayonara? What, what created that inspiration? Uh, the, the lyrics write themselves when you're kind of experienced, when you, when you really let yourself feel what's happening in the world. Uh, you know, just people say things and it becomes music where it, I mean, truthfully, if you break it down, everything vibrates at a certain frequency, atoms vibrate yeah. at a certain, certain frequency. And if you zoom in, if you actually record it, you can zoom in and you see a frequency. And it's the same thing as when you zoom into a Pro Tools, you know, a, a music waveform. So everything is music in a way. And when you... You know, when you're that, when you're a, a musical animal, the way we are, uh, it it gets filtered through, uh, through that, you know, perception. Uh -huh. uh, Sayonara uh, was literally just finished last month. Wow. Okay. So current and event was. The, yeah. And then I got the inspired idea that, oh, it it has to come out before the inauguration. Absolutely. And again, here, did you get COVID and you're a COVID survivor? I am a COVID survivor. It was wow. a terrible case, thank God. Uh, but uh, but I did have a couple nights where I couldn't really breathe, and I did have a, a taste of what people are going through. I mean, it was a, it was a small dose of it, but I had uh, I I could I felt like somebody was pressing on my ribs and like wouldn't let me breathe Whoa. and it was it was scary I, I thought I might have to go to the emergency room um, and uh, there's a song called more love on the album and that's the title song and yeah the lyric for that is broken boy broken girl broken hearts for a broken world take me as I am tonight grateful just to be alive and uh, uh, Mind you, the the song was co-written with a wonderful singer-songwriter who, with whom I've collaborated many times, Marvin Etzioni. Uh, but uh, it was written it was written a couple of years ago. But uh, it became real and and important once I survived the uh, the COVID. Has that changed you in any way? Like when you pass through something like that. I've survived a few life and death situations, so you have. <laughs> so uh, it's not the first time, but uh, and also, I guess the most profound sort of wake up call was losing my mom, who died of a brain tumor at fifty four. Whoa! Um, so uh, and I was with her, and she was my other half and my 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 best friend. So you know, I realized how fragile life is, and uh, so. Nothing has ever felt as serious as that for me personally. Uh, but, that was a big one. But I did get, oh, okay, this is, this, this could, you know, God forbid, but this could happen. Uh, and you just, it, it makes you really be present. Honestly, that's the lesson from everything is to, how to be more in the moment. Mm hmm. Yeah. Wow. And then ultimately the love, more love. And who, who doesn't want more love? I love that story. Thank you for sharing that. Masochists. Masochists? Yeah. I don't guess. want more love? <laughs> they want more hate and division. <laughs> I keep but going back to that. No way. And you know what? I was making a joke, but the truth is that that is actually a perfect metaphor for the fact that it's all a gift. It's all God. Even the devil is just God in disguise. And by God, I mean the force that created life, whatever that is, whatever you believe in. Mm -hmm. You need them both. It's like a yin and yang. You can't have a north without a south or a positive without a negative. There's a balance. If you can spiritually surf right through the center of that, then you're in the now. And that's where you reconcile paradox. And paradox is, and that's what the yin and yang symbol is. It's the it's, the, it's one symbol that represents the, the unifying of the paradox, the illusion of paradox. 
Uh, there's a release coming out. Um, very soon, and, we can't say anything about it except that it's a wonderful film called Strip Down, Rise Up. And it's about feminine, women reclaiming their femininity, their sexuality, their bodies, their sensuality through sensual dance and specifically pole dancing, uh, healing trauma through movement. And it's phenomenal. It's a really, it's like the next step in the Me Too movement. It's really powerful. It's uh, coming soon. Be on the lookout for it. It's called Strip Down, Rise Up. And uh, I scored that, wrote a bunch of songs for it as well. A couple of those songs are on this forthcoming record. Uh, and, uh, and that should be fun. That's uh, that's super cool. I'm glad that you did that. You know, I um, this interview is about you and your music and, and I'm promoting you and your music. I do want to say though that I I did some work. God, it must have been ten years ago with the pole dancer community in Los Angeles, and we used to have these shows at the King King in Hollywood. And they're some of the most empowered women. And it would piss me off whenever I would say pole dancer to somebody, and they thought immediately they thought stripper. Right. right. And maybe some of them had, but it was right before the pole dancer federation came out. There was the. In fact, I just got an email before yours from. Um, Poll magazine and there's a and these women are the and they would all go to each other's shows and they're just the most empowered women I've ever been around and and it was just so phenomenal to see that kind of support. The, you know I'm I'm waiting for the day that pole dancing's in the Olympics because I mean if figure skating can be, yeah, you know you want to get in shape do some pole dancing, man, you gotta watch incredible. The movie. You'll love it. It's really great. There's some amazing movement in there and uh, and it's so it's really sexy. It's like. It's simultaneously uh, like about feminine empowerment and also super sexy and sensual and, and, and you know, seductive, but it's, but they're not at odds with each other. It really feels like, like the evolution of sensuality. And, you know, they're using that, you know, as a way to overcome Trauma. Personal trials, yeah, trauma and challenges. I mean, what were some of the ones that struck you in particular when you when you were working on that? What were some of the the what? Well, when you're working on the music for it, I mean, of course, you're adding the emotional element, the emotional layer to these to the film. Yeah. Were there any scenes that you or or a person that you that brought up a subject that you that resonated with you, like it just you know. It, it jumped out at you or, or was there an interview of a, of, a, of a dancer that started to share her story and you're like, you know, you resonated with that at all? Uh, well, I think um, kind of related to the whole experience, you know, I mean, we're all, you know, it's everything from, you know, self-consciousness about your body to not being able to relate to your body because you've been violated to feeling anger that needs to be expressed and movement is a really healthy way of expressing it where nobody gets hurt, hopefully. Um, and uh, so I, I related to all of that, you know, and uh, it's probably, you know, I mean, the, the statistics have been said, but I'll just reiterate, uh, the UN did a, a uh, you know, just did a study that discovered that one out of every three women in the world has been or will be sexually violated or abused. And uh, and so that's one out of every three around the world. Wow. That means that pretty much every, you know, everybody you meet is touched by this on some level. Or every um, third person, you know. Uh, so, um, so, uh, so, you know, I, I did relate to it. I I'm a survivor myself on, you know, not, I, I was thankfully not, uh, not actually raped, but, you know, there's, but here's the thing. And this is, this is really important to me. Um, Anita Hill, because I, I scored this, in, this documentary about Anita. Um, Anita Hill says that sexual harassment is not about sex. It's about power. And when you think of it that way, yeah. then you see the parallel between sexual harassment and you know the Me Too movement with the movement uh, uh, to end racism, because that's just about power as well. And then you see the parallel between that and 
uh, and a perpetual war, which is also about power, domination of one over another. And then you see the parallel between that and the environmental movement, which is us asserting our dominance over animals and, and ecosystems and the planet, asserting that we know better than, than a system of life that existed. Hmm. You know, we're just a blip in the yeah. evolutionary scheme. And then you see a parallel between that and uh, and what else? You know, economic uh, disparity. You know, uh, insecurity, yeah. poverty, system of poverty. That's you know, there's any the which is why I say sayonara <laughs> to, the, <laughs> to the domination, because the domination paradigm only perpetuates itself the only thing we can do as we as we evolve out of the combustion engine and fossil fuels and the burning and the and the 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 domination principle that feeds our planet right now we uh we we start to integrate renewable energy and we start to learn how to harness the energy of the sun and wind and we mm. have this technology and it's no to me it's not uh, it, it's perfectly poetic and and um it's perfect timing that we're moving into that we we are running out of fossil fuels and we have to then move into uh renewable energy at the same time that we have to learn how to uh include each other and and overcome racism and stop dominating mm -hmm. each other and stop um uh stop fighting each other we have to learn how to yeah to have compassion for each other and uh and uh and include each other and uh, as we include the sun and the wind and the animals and stop and and we have to stop eating meat you know at least so much you know we have to stop we have to stop being cruel because we're not going to survive if we continue this way and so in it becomes as we evolve we see, we, we we will evolve out of the domination paradigm and uh, it's just about evolving waking up and i do believe that this has been a wake-up call Good. you you're bringing your mom up a lot when was it that she passed away she passed away in 97. So oh okay it's, uh, it's long enough ago for me to to not be quoting her every other sentence uh but uh but <laughs> she was my best friend and she was my yeah my teacher and great you know, my, my, my biggest inspiration. So, uh, what can I say? I get that, you know, in, 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 in some of what I've been looking up, it, she, it, it seems like you've been empowered quite a bit, you know, by her and you're strong, you're a strong woman and you're going after what you want to go after. And, and, you know, that's awesome that she's given you, um, that type of upbringing that allowed you to have the power to go forth you know, with your sword, so to speak, with the violin and, and you're strong about your, your word, you're strong about what you believe in. And, you know, I can see that she was you know, a really big part of your conviction, you know, in your life moving forward and now or wherever, you know, wherever it was, that's phenomenal. You know, not everybody has that. And she sounds like a phenomenal woman. Um, and you're a phenomenal woman. And, um, Thank you so much. yeah, that's a gift and a blessing, so you know, you, David. I beg your pardon. And so are you. I'm I'm a strong woman as well. Um, I'm kidding. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's nice to hear that coming from you because it means a lot right now. Um, I, I wanted to see. You know, you were working on this pole dancer film. Have you tried the pole? Did any of the dancers give you a lesson? This was all done during COVID, so I was not uh, able to. I, I in fact, I I worked right through COVID. Uh, I in fact, I worked through my own COVID. So. Uh, oh my God. I didn't have time to stop. I did. Uh, I scored uh, this documentary called "Strip Down, Rise Up," which is about the pole dancing. Um, uh, a documentary about Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Another one. Yes. Uh, it's really special, beautiful film. 
uh, and it's called Ruth uh, Justice Ginsburg in her own words. And I scored my first uh, Netflix TV series uh, with my friend Ben Bromfield. And, uh, and we did, uh, it's called Ginny and Georgia, and that's coming soon as well. Nice. You've been, I had, what did that look like? How did you, uh, what did it look like for you to be working while you had COVID? Uh, just, uh, you know, when that's the thing, you know, music is like being possessed in a way you just, uh, you don't really know how bad it is until you stop playing. <laughs> huh. Um, and you just, you know, it's, it's, inspiration and passion and a deadline <laughs> have, <laughs> have you know have a remarkable way of uh of you know uh, of powering you through when you're when you're running on fumes i can't imagine you not powering through i mean whatever comes your way you power through it you had a i saw you on a ted talk where you had a head injury or it was a something with the house that was fumes or something that's pretty, I can relate to that. I've got a couple stories with, with head injuries and, um, yeah, that, you know, yeah, just, I, I can't imagine, I can't imagine you not powering through anything. Is there anything that you n didn't power through that uh, we need to know about? <laughs> uh, well, I think to me, honestly, when you, when I hear you say that, the thing that comes up for me is actually less about, uh, like the, it really, what it does is it actually makes me um, it makes me grapple with the notion of power. What oh, is back, yeah. real power? Because uh, uh, I think, you know, we sometimes, you know, powering through, we, you know, like a bulldozer, we can just get through the obstacles. You know, there's a place for that. Uh, and yet that also is endemic of the domination paradigm that I'm, that I've really been meditating on. So, uh, what I realize, you know, and, and we see people who are loving getting taken advantage of and getting abused mm. and, you know, getting the short end of the stick in a way. Um, but ultimately, and this is going to sound corny and I don't, and I, but this is what I've been meditating on is that, 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 that it's just an illusion that, that, that barreling through powering through is kind of an illusion. And actually, the only true power is the creative power. Is and creation is about love. The only real power is love. And I don't mean that that like you that that the rule of law isn't important because obviously it is. And we are living through a you know four years where the rule of law meant nothing. But in fact, what we've been what, witnessing is the illusion of power without. Mm -hmm love and the that illusion of power is not long for this world it's mm. it's you know we, we can't survive like that that that's mutually assured destruction so when when you ask me if i'm powering through stuff what i'm what i'm trying to do is actually find the power and softness and creativity in a way that is you know power born of passion and uh, and inspiration rather than power born of domination and need to achieve. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's I a, it's I a, want it's... To achieve. it's not that I don't, uh, but I'm, I don't want to, you know, I, I think that power can be sort of synonymous with people like bulldozing something and bulldozing and you can't bulldoze past obstacles without also sometimes bulldozing people. And I know I've done that. I've probably even done that to you. And for that, I'm sorry. Uh, Why I, would you say that? I just, I, I know that I, you know, I can, I've gotten, I, I have, I don't mean specifically you necessarily. I mean, uh, that I've, you know, I've, I've bulldozed my softer side of myself. I've, 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 I've dominated myself. <laughs> um, and it hasn't always been the most pleasant experience. <laughs> uh, I guess what I mean is, uh, you know, I, I and this, I don't mean to, uh, I don't mean this in any kind of like 
mona uh, uh, what is this uh uh marketing way but i mean that's what i'm singing about when i sing i'm laying down my so that the chorus of sayonara yeah. is sayonara to the drama i don't want to play that game sayonara to the dogma nobody nobody was born to hate all i want to do is love you i'm laying down my arms today not another in my name and i realized that i have been uh you know i've annihilated people in my in my strength in my in my illusion of strength and i don't want to i don't want to destroy i only want to love i want to create and that's why i'm you know i'm committing and with this music with with my daily prayers to seeing through the eyes of love and and being an expression of that hmm it sounds like the album is almost like it's uh, a making of an amends and maybe even to yourself, the, your softer side where you're laying down and if I've in any way caused you, you know, uh, harm or yeah. then you're apologizing almost like this album is an, almost like an, an apology and it's peace in addition to yeah. something that we all need to follow. Yeah. A peaceful world for the future. You know, I hadn't really thought about it as an apology, um, but just what you were the way you were expressing but, that, it was almost you know, sounding like I, it. But I agree. I, it, you know, that's a, a, yeah. There, are, I've, I have definitely, for for all the times I've, I've annihilated another hmm. person's feelings or idea. Uh, I, I am sorry. And I do apologize, and I am laying down my arms. And it is really important to me to, uh, to you know, I'm holding myself accountable now. And I, I and I think that that's really the first step toward making peace, uh, hmm. in the world. It's not to say that there's that it should it shouldn't also have its public policy counterpart. Uh, but you know, I'm not one who says I'm going to turn off the news because you know peace begins with me. I think the microcosm and the macrocosm exist for a reason. Lily, thank you so much for being on the show. And I'm really grateful to, that you spent your time here with me. And uh, pleasure. Just thank you so much for having me. Looking forward to the new release. And everybody should pick up Sayonara. And with that, Sayonara. Sayonara.